stand in for Pastor Matt this morning while he is on vacation. Uh, he will be returning from vacation on Wednesday and will be here next Sunday morning for worship. Okay, Jeannie, do you have some announcements? Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> I'd like to say thank you to our many helpers last week who put together 88 dinners. Thank you very much for all your help. And I made some soups. We made eight soups from what was left. And we had all kinds of helping hands, and I just wanted to say a sincere thank you. Those meals are freezing right now, and they'll be delivered this week to Caring for Friends, at which point they'll be distributed to individual recipients. And um, thank you again to everyone who came to help last week. Um, our other hat that I'm going to wear is Bible school sign-up is due this weekend, preferably, so that we have enough children's names on our list to prepare all of our crafts and our lessons. So if you have a child in mind to sign up, please do so as soon as possible. The uh, registration forms are in the back and in the foyer track rack. Thank you very much. Uh, Bible School is the 24th, by the way. Okay, thank you, Jeannie. Other announcements, uh, we have a concert on July 27th. Uh, we have our 60th anniversary celebration in September. And also in September, uh, we will have an affirmation of baptism. Uh, see the bulletin for details on any of these announcements. Does anyone else have any announcements? Okay. We'll go on to prayer requests. Does anyone have? Yes. Pardon me? Barb? Barbara. Don, okay. Matt? Okay, anyone else? Okay, thank you. Okay, please stand if able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sins, whose mercy endures forever. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. 
In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Our gathering hymn, Rise Up, O Saints of God, in the LBW, number 383. Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, you direct our lives by your grace. In your words of justice and mercy, we shape the world. Mold us into a people who welcome your word and serve one another. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Please be seated. Our first reading is from Jeremiah chapter 28. The prophet Jeremiah spoke to the prophet Hananiah in the presence of the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord fulfill the words that you uh, have promised or have prophesied and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. But listen now to this word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people. The prophets who preceded uh, you and me from ancient times prophesied war, famine, and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, when the word of that prophet comes true, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. The word of God, the word of life. Thanks be to God. The psalm we read responsively, it's uh, Psalm 89. Your love, O Lord, forever will I sing. From age to age my mouth will proclaim your faithfulness. For I have persuaded that your steadfast love is established forever. You have set your faithfulness firmly in the heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn an oath to David, my servant. I will establish your line forever and preserve your throne for all generations. Happy are the people who know the festal shout. They walk. O Lord, in the light of your presence, they rejoice together in your name. They are jubilant in your righteousness. For you are the glory of their strength, and by your favor our might is exalted. 
second reading is from Romans chapter 6. Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death. So that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in the newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body of sin might be destroyed, and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin, once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive. In, uh, to God in Christ Jesus. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please stand if you are able. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 10th chapter. Glory be to you, O Lord. The gospel reading for this morning begins with verse 34 and continues through the reading in your bulletin. Jesus is speaking to his disciples. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father and a daughter against her mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law and a person's enemies will be those of his own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds their life will lose it, and whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. We'll continue verse 40, which is in your bulletin. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Let us pray. We thank you for all our blessings that you have given us. We pray that our worship this morning will renew our faith and will be pleasing to you. Amen. In our gospel reading, Jesus is preparing his disciples for what they will encounter when they go forth with the message of the kingdom of God. They must be fully committed to their calling, devoted to Jesus and his teachings. Some of the people who hear their message will accept it. It will be a life changing for them. Others will not want to change their lives. They will hate the disciples. They will hate the message. 
Some of them were one of the disciples killed. Verse 34. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not to come, come to bring peace, but a sword. In this context, a sword divides. Elsewhere in the Bible, God divides the sheep from the goats, those who believe in Jesus and follow them, from those who reject Jesus. Jesus' message is that of love and forgiveness. This is in sharp contrast to the prevailing thinking of the day and the values of the world then and also now. This contrast in and of itself will lead to division. Now America is divided by the same teaching. There is no talking about it, just lawsuits thrown at Christians who are trying, just trying to live their faith. Jesus did not create the division, but rather the division was created by the response of the people. The sword represents a spiritual division, not a call to violence. Verse 38, and whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. This is the cost of discipleship. We are called to follow Jesus, embracing self-denial, sacrifice, and obedience. So what must we sacrifice? Anything, including worldly wants and desires, if they hinder our walk with Christ if they hinder our walk with Christ. We may face challenges and hardships in this commitment. It may take us out of the, our comfort zone, but there are rewards. I think we all know about our rewards. The first is a closer relationship with the Lord Holy Spirit. He will be there for us during our trials and with our talents. The second is a deeper faith through knowledge and understanding. The third is eternal life. Our sacrifices and our hardships are minor when compared to the joy that comes through being with our Lord eternally in this world and the next. Verse 39, whoever finds their life will lose it, and whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. He who found his life, his earthly life, who is a person of the world and not of God, will lose his eternal life with the Lord. He who lost his life, this worldly life, when he was born again, will find a more meaningful life on earth, an eternal life with the Lord. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. That was verse 40. This verse emphasizes the importance of accepting the measure, measure messengers of God. They will in turn become messengers of God by sharing the gospel with others and letting their light shine before others. From the disciples, they will receive and know Jesus and God the Father. Verse 41. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive 
the reward of the righteous. So this verse, like verse 40, emphasizes the importance of welcoming or receiving a messenger of God. A prophet is a person who can speak in public about the Lord. Some of them are able to speak about upcoming events. A righteous person is a person of God. We know that reward, what the reward will be for both the the righteous and the prophet and for the people who welcome them. Verse 42, and whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, None of these will lose their reward. Earlier in Jesus' ministry, people were bringing children to Jesus for him to bless them. But the disciples sent them away. Children back then were second-class citizens to be kept out of sight. But Jesus did not consider children second-class citizens. He also said, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. A child is trusting and openly accepts that which is given to him. In conclusion, Back in biblical days, prior to the time of Jesus, the father of a household was head of that household. He was also the ruler of the household. What he said was final. If he believed in the Lord, his family believed in the Lord. If he worshiped idols, so did his family. Then Jesus came along. His message was new, different, and compelling. And the miracles of healing made Jesus the real thing. Many people followed Jesus. And so we can see how the message of Jesus broke up families. Some members of the family followed Jesus. Some did not. Today it is different in America. In one, in one family we have believers, we have atheists, and we have spiritual people. But they are still a family. Many people know of Jesus, but are happy and successful and believe they do not need Jesus. The truth is that we all need Jesus. We need him to give us a purpose in life to give us peace, hope, guidance, comfort, and joy. Joy as opposed to happiness. He gives us salvation, a new and better life to look forward to, and he forgives us. He shows us love as with his sacrifice on the cross, and he loves us all. Please stand if you are able for the hymn of the day.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand. and for scientists working on energy solutions. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for this nation and all nations, for presidents, governors, and legislators, for judges, juries, district attorneys, and public defenders, for military personnel, for those who are incarcerated. Guide us in ways of freedom that promote the common good. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those in need, for exiles, immigrants, refugees, and those seeking asylum, for victims of harassment, torture, or abuse, for those who are ill, especially Barbara, Victoria, George, Don, Matt, and all those we say out loud or in our hearts. For any near death and for all who grieve, God in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for children, for their safety at home and in child care settings, for their flourishing at summer programs and camps, for the many people who care for them, including parents and grandparents, child care workers and teachers, coaches, counselors and mentors, pediatricians and psychologists. God in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all the saints and prophets who have received the free gift of God, which is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. May their lives of humble servants inspire us in faith. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our prayers and answer us, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share the peace with your neighbor. If you haven't already done so, please leave your offering uh, by the door on your way out. Let us pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O oh God, we give you thanks and praise. By your word you called your people Israel to tell your wonderful gift freedom from captivity, water on the desert, journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you, for your word of life, O oh God. Through Jesus, 
your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness. Forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love, through your word of life, O oh God. Send your spirit of truth, O oh God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith. Increase our hope and deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O oh God, draw near to all who call on you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. The Lord's Prayer, as Jesus taught us, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. God bless America. <laughs>